Satnam, namaste, welcome to I Am Woke. I'm your host, I'm Alina Calder. In this video, we're gonna go through all of the energy and ascension themes for November. If you're new to my world, hello. I am a high performance life and business coach, spiritual mentor, modern shaman, and personal branding coach. I work a lot in the Akashic Records and these videos are channeled energy updates from the divine mother of the multiverse, which is mother God consciousness. She is my favorite entity being goddess to embody and then to bring you these beautiful updates. November is gonna be a really powerful and transformative month, so I'm really excited to jump in with you guys. If you wanna get ahead of the transformation, organize your energy, heal yourself, and connect to your own inner divine union, I have a beautiful shamanic guided healing meditation. It's about 45 minutes long and a 15 minute explainer video that you can get a hold of for free in the description link below. Without further ado, let's jump right in. The first theme for November is that there is an entirely new wave of awakening. This is happening both individually as well as at the collective level. There's a whole wave of people that are in the process of just beginning to wake up. And those that have woken up recently, woken up um, to what it is to be a soul having a human experience, are going to be moving through the levels and awakening even more. So people that you thought were just dripping in insecurity and just had no idea about what was going on, a lot of them are gonna start waking up now. They're gonna start tuning in and they're they're probably gonna need a lot of help. There are a lot of us that are doing this work and then when you start to wake up in a time period like this, what's beautiful about it is that there are a lot of people waking up so it feels kind of normal, but there are a few things about this. When a lot of people become conscious and start to awaken, it creates a ripple effect across the timelines and the quantum and the collective reality and the matrix. And it can feel really chaotic. When a lot of people awaken, they're not always awakening in peace. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> they're going through dark nights. They're going through crisis. Um, their, their life is being probably upheavaled to some level. And that creates a lot of tension, a lot of drama and a lot of chaos at the collective level. So Divine Mother was asking me to relay this to you guys so that you know at a few different levels, one, people are waking up. So don't underestimate the people around you that you thought would never get it because a lot of them actually might start to get it now. That's one. And two, with a lot of people practicing a new awakening process, there's gonna be a lot of chaotic energy and momentum in the collective. You'll kind of just feel it. It might just feel like an anxious energy that's like running in your subconscious or in the background or in lots of people around you. And this is being told to you more so that you can satiate the desire to participate in it <laughs> because you're being told, you'll know consciously that this is what's happening and you can see it and observe it from the place of it being outside of yourself, that they're waking up, they're going through their process, and you don't have to take it on. Just knowing that it's happening will allow you to be in a more observer role, and then you can do your own work and participate as you're guided to. What's really beautiful about this is that families are probably gonna be making new contacts, long lost relatives might be resurfacing, people that you thought you would never hear from, very likely could be coming around with a new attitude or just plain curiosity or realizing that you're living a Really cool life and they're like wait hold on I knew you when you know XYZ however many years ago how did you do that you know it might be old friendships the exes might be resurfacing that perhaps belong in your life or maybe it's a revisitation for you to bring closure to something for yourself either way the theme around this is as people are starting to wake up there's gonna be a theme around them wanting to connect feeling curious and engaging or participating in some level of deep healing with wherever it is that they are. That might just look like a conversation. It might look like having to set like easy boundaries for yourself, but regardless, it will be based in healing, awakening, and curiosity. When people from your past come around and maybe you thought they were a certain type of person because there's so much change happening in the collective right now because so many people are waking up. Spontaneous awakenings are like a real thing, you guys. Like all of a sudden someone can just 
wake up and be a completely different person. Like they, they can have a complete spiritual awakening experience overnight while they're sleeping or in one day of an experience. It depends on what soul contracts they have and stuff like that. But regardless, a lot of people are going to be engaging in this. So the point is don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge people. And if, even if you've known them in the past, if they come back around to say hello, um, just look at it. I'm not saying you have to engage. Not all relationships are healthy, obviously, uh, from the past. And we have boundaries for a reason. But should things approach you, rather than having the lens of this is bad, this is terrible, this is wrong, go away, it would be good to have the lens of curiosity for yourself. Like, oh, I wonder if they've made a change. Let's see if that change exists. Let's see if this is healthy. And if it is, then maybe there's something very different here, a very different relationship that I can have that can be engaged in. There's gonna be a new idea of healing in the collective. We're all kind of moving towards more community, more support, more healing, more helping. So as more people are waking up, those of us that have been doing this work are going to be very effortlessly just extending out a hand. Like, oh, I've been through that. Here's, here's my experience in a process like that. Maybe something from my experience will give you an idea of what you can do for yourself. But most of the theme is showing people that they're not alone and that the awakening process, although I won't sugarcoat it, is, is difficult for sure, especially in the beginning, that there are people around them to support them, that they're not just like landing in a, in a really chaotic world without help. There are so many of us now that have been on this consciousness journey that, you know, we're all, I, I think we're all like willing to have conversations and facilitate other people having an easier time around their own awakening process. So if you find people waking up around you, feel free to ask them if they want to hear your experience. There's also a really beautiful collective unification energy that's sweeping through the collective energies through November that's going to be bringing a lot of people together. Obviously, we're going into the holidays. That's going to be part of that energy, but it's way deeper than that. There's a lot of need right now for depth in connection for safety and family and safety and community, especially with all the world events that are going on. So expect to connect with more people, expect the connections that you have to go deeper. It's not about surface level anymore. It's really about being honest, being vulnerable, speaking your truth in a tactful way, being truly authentically you and allowing yourself to be seen as completely you. And then also holding space for other people to be that, um, around you as well. So this unification is about bringing people together over the theme of love rather than fear. So just keep this in the back of your mind. Give yourself the support of community in whatever way that works for you. As people are growing and waking up, moving forward over the next couple of months, be available to have a conversation with them and show them what you've learned or what path you've taken, how it's worked for you. And a lot comes from just sharing experience. Most of us just wanna know that we're not alone in our experience, so. Getting together with other humans, chatting about it, going deep, getting vulnerable, being honest is a good way to do that, whether it's like one-on-one -on -one with a friend or whether it's in small groups. Theme number two is past deep soul pain will be coming into immediate spontaneous completion and divine resolve. That's a long way of saying that Spontaneous emotional healing is not only real, it's necessary and will be popping into all of our lives in November. Those of us who have been harboring deep soul pain will be given the synchronistic opportunities to release all of that deep pain in a way that almost won't even make sense. It is miraculous. I've been seeing it in me, I've been seeing it around me and it's really wild to watch an experience where like someone in front of me just all of a sudden resolves like 30, 60 years of a way of being, of a deep soul wound, of not being seen in a certain way or something they've been carrying in like just a moment. And that's gonna be kind of a new reality moving forward. Spirit is working through us and our relationships to trigger certain emotional inconsistencies in our behavior that are generally stemming from like chi deep childhood wounds and they're gonna be coming to the surface. Don't see them as a dysfunction. When they, when they do come up, just go with the flow. Because, I mean, we've all got like our child selves, right, the inner child, and then we've got the adult self. And the adult self can hold the space for the child self to do whatever it needs to do to release whatever it needs to release. And you're kind of holding space for both 
during an emotional, spontaneous healing process like this. But the point is don't run from it, don't stuff it down, let it out, it's coming up because it needs to be expressed and through the expression, spirit is taking it over saying, I'd like to remove all that baggage for you. Uh, would you mind? You had a lot of karma that was overdue and we just kind of, we want to get it out, clean it up, take out the trash so that you've got a lot more energy and this doesn't have to be running in your subconscious behind the scenes now anymore. This is really beautiful, borderline instantaneous healing. It can be in a few minutes in a conversation with, with a friend. It could be over an hour or a couple hours, but it will be resolved likely in under a half day. That's what I've been seeing kind of across the board with my experience so far. If you guys experience this, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. Theme number three is massive sexual and sensual awakening. Tap in to the powers behind your sensuality. We are sensual sexual creatures. And in society, we've been taught to take all of the things that we think are more sensual about ourselves or sexual or desires and stuff them down and repress them and it's just not working anymore. It's an easy way to keep people controlled is to repress sexual desire. Obviously, I'm not telling you to go out and do crazy. Sh well, I mean, do whatever, do whatever stuff feels good <laughs> and healthy with you, for you, with consent. That's what I would say. But we are no longer at a time period where it makes sense to repress sexuality. It's it's not working anymore. Honestly, like from what I've channeled, most of the disease in the world, I don't know about most, a lot of the disease in the world, no, maybe most, uh, stems from repressed sexuality because we are sexual creatures. We are creative, co-creative by nature. Sexuality is just the manifestation process of creation. Obviously, that's very natural. So if you go to repress that, that's gonna come out in very dark shadowed ways across different people and patterns and the collective and behaviors. And it's really just honestly, like blindly unacceptable and I'm gonna come on my soapbox for a minute because it's channeling through, but it, it's, it's unacceptable to repress sexuality and unacceptable to allow shadowed sexuality that doesn't involve consent, that doesn't involve permission, that is coming to the surface and has always been coming to the surface, right? Like we're humans, this is a thing. Because the light aspects of sexuality were controlled diminished, demeaned, and shamed. And now is the time that we can step out of the shame and embrace sexuality and sensuality in a really healthy, positive way. It is an act of creation. It is creation. Your sensual energy, your personal sexual energy, your kundalini energy is your creativity. They're synonymous. It is your chi and your life force. If you shut it off, you're shutting off your life force. And from my perspective and from the channel that I've been given and I embody with Divine Mother, embracing your sexuality and your sensuality, working with your kundalini energy, understanding who you are, being able to feel who you are and sense your environment and work within your own creative energy, the masculine and feminine polarities that you have within yourself and your kundalini energy. And then being able to share that with the, the partner partners that feel right for you with consent, like that is very healthy. And unfortunately, our society doesn't look at it that way. But this is the month to start deep diving into your sensuality. Source is very sexual. It is very creative. Uh, source does not deny any level of sensuality or creation energy. It's about harnessing it and claiming it and using it as your own creative life force, protecting it, you know, knowing how to use it, how to work with it. It is fire energy. Fire does burn. There is responsibility that comes with that. And that doesn't, you know, it's, it's not great to shut it off permanently or just not deal with it. You want to train yourself how to work with your own fire, how to work with your own Kundalini energy whether that is going into sexual solo practice, whether that is working um, with an intimacy coach, whether that is doing partnered work or maybe even exploring or looking into Tantra, whether that is working with your own spiritual practice of yoga, which is union. It's the union of the masculine and feminine components and polarities of the self. Allow yourself to feel, allow yourself to romance and to be romanced. Allow yourself to be sensual and go deep with your intimacy, whether it's by yourself and or 
in a healthy way that you enjoy with partner or partners. Your sensuality has everything to do with the way you carry yourself, the way you carry your energy, how you move, how you speak, how you feel, where your power is in your body, how you distribute that power, how that power and your own union within yourself makes room for source consciousness to be embodied in your body. It all comes down to your ability to hold work with and wield your own creation energy, which <laughs> hello is sensuality. So this might be a call for some of you guys to um, really get out of your way and to start to learn about it. Again, whether it's yoga, whether it's starting to read about or listen to experts in intimacy, things like eye gazing are really great. Yogic practices around eye gazing are really great. Being able to build intimacy and sensuality is not all about physicality. It's about your own energy and how you connect with other people, whether of the same gender or the opposite gender. It's about how you're able to meet them and meet yourself in the own depth of your willingness of like how deep you're willing to go in your feeling and in the exchange. And I would for sure say that the sexual energy is an exchange, the sensual energy is an exchange that is moving first energetically. It can be exchanged at a number of different chakra points. Um, it carries a lot of information and consent across all of that before it even gets physical, if it even gets physical. Creation energy is creation energy. Sexuality is creation energy. Anything that you're co-creating, you are using sexual energy for. And I think it's really important, at least from my perspective, to begin to understand what that is for you, how it feels for you, so that you know what consent feels like at absolutely every level, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. It'll help you understand your boundaries. It'll help you understand your own energy. It'll help you honor other people's boundaries and other people's energy. I guarantee it. It makes you very safe to be around as well as being the safety no matter where you are. Feeling completely secure and safe in yourself because you're working with your own divine masculine and divine feminine. So for someone like me, I've had to really, and, and a lot of women actually, I've had to really uh, train and train myself and understand myself to work with my own alpha energy, my own masculine energy to trust it so that I could trust the opposite gender. And it all stems from your ability to connect within your own polarities, your own masculine feminine polarities or alpha and omega polarities. And all that sensuality is here to tell you to take up space, breathe. When you breathe, breathe with your whole body, take it in, expand your chest, Allow your heart to be open, allow the movement, the kundalini energy in your spine to move from the base of your spine all the way up and back down, leaving a full fluid open channel. There's an art and a science to this stuff. I am just skipping right over it here and giving you the basics. Um, and I'm gonna be shooting a video soon too on going on a deep dive on alpha and omega or divine feminine, divine masculine energy within the self, within personal union and in relationship with others because it's something that I find really fascinating and that I've channeled on significantly because I think understanding it has given me what I've needed to heal from a lot of dysfunction that I did not choose um, consciously to engage in and to really get to know my own energy so that I'm always safe because I'm willing to claim my own energy and work with it and understand it and feel healthy in it. On this topic too, there is so much intelligence for those of you that are women that have a womb space. The womb space is the, the sexual creative space. It's where babies are made. And there's so much consciousness here that you can tap into when you work with your own sensuality that really is just so timeless and so incredible and works in unison with the cosmic mother, with the divine mother, the multiverse. And then there's also a lot of creative power and understanding and consciousness in the genitals. And it's just 
a reality. And you can work with conscious energy in the lower triangle, in your lower chakras. They don't have to be crazy, primal, like unconscious, subconscious things. Like you can work with these energies consciously and bring that passion into everything you do and creation and intelligence. It is spiritual intelligence and it's extraordinary. Some of you that are watching this are gonna be like, yeah, yeah, duh, we get it. But most people don't. So that's why it's here. Divine Mother really wanted me to cover this into some level of depth as a big theme moving forward because there is a really steep level of sexual and sensual and spiritual liberation that we are now walking into. And I'm seeing that this is the, the beginning of that awakening. So this theme is gonna be very, very present in general, but more people are starting to jump on board with it and don't completely understand what the energy is. So from my perspective, I'm able to start labeling it and I'll take you guys as far as I can go in videos like this. For those of you that wanna dive deeper, I will leave a couple links with some yogis um, and teachers that I trust around deep intimacy work below if that's helpful. And Divine Mother is telling me right now as well to remind you guys to relieve the need to know in this process. This is not about getting anywhere. It's not about accomplishing anything. It's not about having an agenda. This topic is about getting to know yourself and getting to know your energy, your flow, your current, your chi, how you create, when you create, why you create, what it feels like. Sensuality is feeling. It is in the body. You can't get there from there. You know, like you can't hang out in the mind and be sensual. Like you have to actually be embodied. You have to be sensual. Releasing the need to know is releasing fear around the unknown. And a lot of people have fear around their sexuality, fear around what it means to be a sexual being, fear around what that looks like. Whatever fear and shame and guilt was projected on them when they were younger for doing or being certain things, like for just being human. Um, so release the need to know release any agenda or idea that you're getting or going somewhere and just be willing to accept the flow of sensual sexual energy, kundalini energy in your body and start to identify what that is and understand it from the place, not mentally, but understand it from the place of the willingness of trying it on, the willingness of being, of, of wanting to work with it, the willingness of, of feeling what it is and not shutting it down. Taking time aside in a way that makes sense for you, that's the most safe for you, in a practice that feels right for you. I'm not gonna have all the answers in a video li like this for you guys, but more videos are coming on this topic. Set aside the time and, and the practice just to feel, to sense, to be in joy, to be in expression, to be in pleasure. The more you tap into your sensuality, the more you tap into your pleasure, the more good things the universe can bring to you because you are balancing and increasing your threshold for how much pleasure you are willing to receive. So in whatever ways you feel good around this, create some sort of a, a practice. Honestly, most of you should just be doing solo work. If you have partners, great, you'll figure that out. But solo practice is where you start because I don't know how you get to know somebody else without knowing yourself. So that's where I would start. And she's already telling me a really simple practice I can give you guys. She's saying sensuality is something like, it, it really is sensing and feeling. So you could even take yourself out to a cafe and get a croissant and a coffee and just like be there with it and smell the smells that are happening and taste the croissant in your mouth and like, really like feel the texture of it, feel the air in the room. Like this is all sensing, this is physicality. And this is you tapping into your own sensual energy and the intuitive energy that is present, available and turned on. Literally, I'm not telling you guys to go into public and have orgasms like, like when Harry met Sally, but you, you know, it's it, there's like a subtle energy that is present, that is a turn on. And if you can understand the subtlety of that energy, you'll understand how the universe flows through manifestation. Because if you know what that quote turn on is, which is really just, it, it's a heightened awareness of excitement 
and a heightened awareness of a subtle difference in pleasure when something's a little more pleasurable than something else or something's a little more exciting than something else. And the more that you build on experiences of understanding the subtlety of how your body and your intuition is speaking to you through the form of pleasure, the easier it will be for you to increase the baseline and threshold of the amount of joy and pleasure you're able to hold, literally in your life to have in your life, which is the opposite of drama and fear and negativity and crisis. And you know, most of us, all of us that want a good life, want a pleasure filled life. And you can only receive the amount of pleasure that you are comfortable with. So if, if you're not actively practicing working with understanding your subtle sensuality, you're not going to be able to hold that much joy or pleasure, i.e. you're just going to manifest crisis or negative experiences or drama or bad relationships or toxic relationships to keep you stuck in the cycle of what your energy can hold, what you're accustomed to, what your familiarity level is. If you want lots of miracles, and you want lots of fun things to happen to you. And you wanna be in a space of things that make you happy and lots of joy and be in pleasure and excitement a lot in your life as the new baseline. You want beautiful, miraculous things to happen to you all the time. Then practicing daily, focusing on your subtle, sensual energy in whatever way that works for you at all levels um, will be the practice that will actually build your ability to understand and hold experiences, relationships, connections, and miracles that will bring you lots of pleasure and lots of joy. And who doesn't want that? You're entitled to a good life, go get it. It starts with your turn on. And that turn on is super subtle. It's really the degree to which you understand what gives you joy, pleasure, and excitement at the subtle level and what doesn't and at the subtle level just saying no to the things that don't work for you to the things that don't feel good theme number four is build your floor this is about building your foundation the energies over this month from the portals and the eclipses that we just left are going to be building the next four to eight years for all of us of our experiences. We're, most of us are starting new karmic cycles the energy right now is not like a come and go fast paced manifestation um, not that you can't manifest quickly it's more that this is about creating the life that you want in four years in eight years now and preparing for it now setting the stages now knowing where it is that you're going to be directing yourself long term and allowing that foundation and those initial experiences and relationships to be built now structures your career, how you want your finances to look, what you're gonna to wanna to invest in both with your own energy, how you wanna look, how you wanna feel, your health, your family. I would outline everything and really start to think about the foundation that you're building. And a lot of this is gonna come down to how you feel on the moment to moment basis. So this is less about the cars in your garage and the homes that you wanna buy and the material things. There's nothing wrong with material things, but the focus of this foundation is that it is a transformational emotional experience. It's less about the material and more about the experience about how you want to build your life. What do you want to feel the whole time? What do you wanna be your baseline emotions? What do you wanna fall down to as opposed to having to rise up to? It's creating the foundation, the base to your new life. So think about what you wanna build over the next four to eight years and your goals, and then say, how do I wanna get there? How do I want to feel through the whole fluidity of the process? What do I want my baseline emotional experiences to be? You wanna decide on the lifestyle that you want to create. And when I say lifestyle, like of course we think cars and homes and people and trips and fun things, but the lifestyle really is about your emotional flow. It is how do you wanna feel? How much freedom do you want in your day? Because there are a lot of ways to create a material life, right? There are a lot of ways to accomplish things. You can build a life where you are highly successful, perhaps as a CEO, and you have wonderful material things and a beautiful family that you adore, and you have a wonderful um, spouse, and you love your career and everything, but you're stressed out as all hell, and you can't manage your day-to-day, -day, or it's very 
difficult to manage your day to day. Maybe it's like you're completely packed from dusk until dawn. And that's fine if you want that sort of fast paced life. But if you're more, um, if you prefer a slower emotional experience and you build your life that way, you'll be in conflict. Even though you have everything you want, you'll be in direct conflict with it. So you'll feel terrible. And that's where a lot of psychological issues come from with like when we see celebrities that we're like, how do they possibly have all these emotional disturbances and things um, with all these material things. And it's because obviously materialism doesn't give you happiness. It could give you an opportunity for happiness, sure. But your ability to be happy is your ability to understand and manage your emotions, which is really to understand what emotional experience you want as your baseline on the day-to-day -day basis alongside your pursuit of the material. Now, generally speaking, most people pursue the material at the expense of the emotional um, health. So the emotional health dies. <laughs> and you know, people get a lot of achievement at the expense of how they feel with a lot of drama, with probably not nearly enough self care. You know, this is the program, especially in the United States, that we've been running on for a very long time. And it doesn't have to be that way. It just takes a conscious decision from each of us <laughs> as we're building our forward trajectory to decide, yes, I want those things. And I do want to build a beautiful life with material um, achievement, but my priority is my emotional health. I'm gonna get there from understanding what it is I want emotionally. I wanna feel safe. I wanna feel present. I wanna feel highly connected. I wanna feel like I can get vulnerable whenever the F I want. I wanna feel like I can be honest. I wanna know that my honesty can be received. I wanna feel like I'm constantly in my truth and I never have to lie to anyone, especially not myself. I wanna feel pleasure. I don't ever wanna put pleasure off. I wanna feel pleasure every day, saturated in my day. And you know, an experience like that for most people that are chasing achievement, again, achievement's not bad. It's just generally not with the pleasure program. So it's like, it's like understanding what you want to feel, what you want your emotional experience to be, because your emotional experience is your experience. Ding, ding, ding. Like wake up y'all. It's not the achievement. You can achieve whatever you want with whatever emotional standards you decide. And most people decide on crisis, most people decide on ill health, most people decide on sacrificing relationships. I'm saying most, you know, the, the general idea of, of having to achieve this way in the United States culturally. Most people achieve at the sacrifice of just about everything. And it certainly does not have to be that way. You truly can have it all. It just involves the understanding and the knowing consciously that you need to take all into account. Understanding your priorities and your values and all of that comes down to what it is that you want to feel daily. What do you want your baseline emotional experience to feel like? What do you want it to look like? And really get to know it and understand that. I wanted to jump into this in a little more depth because in manifestation circles, people tend to chase the highs of the emotional experience. So your baseline is whatever it is, you deal with your life the way that you do, and then you have to pump up and lift your frequency, your vibrational frequency, and we can do that through anything that would is excite the energy around the body and in the body. That can be done through um, sex magic. That can be done through cold plunges. That can be done through exercise through building energy and heat in the body. It could be done through chanting. It can be done through affirmations and writing where you're constantly like doing things, but it's a constant go, 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 go. I have to lift my energy in order to manifest. I have to get into the vibration in order to attract what I want. I have to do this thing because it's not my resting frequency. It's not my resting state. So I have to do, 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 do. And it's really just accelerating this unnatural achievement performance based anxiety that exists in this country. And I'm saying this as a high performance coach because <laughs> the level of performance that I teach does not come from reaching for things. It comes from being the thing. It comes from being so relaxed and so satiated in the, the intentional design of your life that you're not reaching for shit. It's just happening to you in a relaxed way because it's, it's who you've become. 
your identity adapts to the performance or rather the performance adapts to your identity. And what this whole theme that I'm talking about is, is it's what is your baseline, not the high. We can always reach for highs. We can always pump up our energy. We can always find a way to stimulate in order to manifest. That's fine. But where are you falling to, right? Like, where are you relaxing to? What is your baseline emotional experience? What is your baseline frequency of vibration that you, you are emitting out to the universe? What I see frequently in manifesting communities and talking about this, because it's just like natural and I've done it too, is that we have low lows and when we're at a low low, we're like, F, I need to get out of this. I'm gonna manifest my way out. I'm gonna make so much money, I'm blah, 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 whatever it is, you know? And it's like this addiction to excitement. And then, you know, when we're up there and we can hold it for a certain period of time, but then we fall. And where we fall is where the trough is. Not anywhere near that. We're falling back down to the trough. And then we do it again and we do the whole cycle again. Oh my God, I'm gonna manifest this, ah! You know, like it's, it's like a crazy manic process for a lot of people. And um, I'm not saying that from judgment, I'm saying it to bring awareness to it so that you can realize that it can actually be done not as a crazy manic process. And I've been practicing it for a long time. And a lot of my work personally and, and with my clients is about creating safety in the base. It's about raising your baseline, dropping the anchors, dropping the baggage and feeling so effing safe in your body and in your experience with who you are understanding who you are, being able to take all of the reflections of the mirror of reality that's coming through in relationships and circumstances, people and events, and then allowing yourself to know who you are regardless of what is happening around you, understanding how to intuit and interpret what is happening in the mirror and learning not to take things personally and to find your safety. For me, manifestation and high performance is about raising the baseline experience to be so relaxed, so satiated, so pleasurable that I'm falling into a bed of, oh, I'm relaxed today. Not into whatever chaos I was dreaming and creating into existence when I was younger. Um, which was a lot, by the way. She was the queen of crisis. I can, I can say that for sure. <laughs> crisis and chaos were like my best friends. Um, and I'm happy to say that that's not the case anymore <laughs> because I've been working on this a long time. So you can create a new baseline, a new standard for your life, a new emotional experience that is very safe. And then from that, from that new baseline of self-trust, of self-acceptance, of radical authenticity, of speaking your truth, of all of your virtues and values, when you manifest, the highs don't seem so far. <laughs> They don't really feel like a reach, you know? It just kind of becomes, it just like happens. Miracles just pop into your reality because your baseline existence is already much higher than maybe what it was earlier in your life. Anyway, thank you so much, you guys, for tuning into this video with me. Remember to tap that like button below. If you've made it this far, you did like the video, so like, uh, <laughs> tap the like button. I'd love to hear from you in the comments about what themes are coming up energetically for you now as well or what you're experiencing. Hit that subscribe button, tap the bell for notifications so you don't miss any energy updates. And if you guys are interested, here are a few ways that I have available where you can work with me. I published a meditation album recently, lots of energetic coding. It's like sitting down with me as a shaman and going through and coding your energy fields around success. They're called the I Am Success Meditation. You can catch the link in the description below. I have another program called Break the Mold that is an 11 module deep dive program on radical authenticity so that you can manifest the life of your absolute dreams, increase your vibrational frequency, and attend to your own levels of high performance that will feel quite natural and quite you because I'm gonna take you through the process of understanding your limitless potential and dropping all the baggage that stands in the way, understanding who you are, how to speak your truth, how to tap into your deepest confidence, why you lost the confidence in the first place, how to be confident all the time from, from source, from spirit, not from ego. 15 years of my life work, honestly, in personal development. I'm so proud of this program, so I'll leave a link in the description below for you as well, just for being a YouTube subscriber, so you can get that hookup. I also have another program called Akashic Records Immersion, where I teach you psychic development and how to tap into your own intuitive abilities and understand them through your own meditation practice, through going in, reading, intuiting, and understanding your own 
Akashic Records, which are, are your own soul blueprint. I'll leave that link below as well. And then one more link is for my Transformation Accelerator program, where I work one-on-one -on -one with private clients in both life and business coaching to do a deep dive transformation in six to 12 months. I have so much love for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Enjoy the month. It's a really powerful one. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. Shoot me a message. I will respond to them. So much love. See you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye.